Shot, I don't know how. Well, he can also check with top spin, stay on the left side of the nine. I think that's what he'll play. Allows him to get closer to the eight ball. He's the kind of player, Alex, who, if he went deep into a tournament and became a, a consistent contender, who I think would be very good for the game. He's opinionated. He, he's not a shrinking violet. Just the kind of character you want. All right, nice one. We've got a second bite at the cherry after missing position on the four. But he shows us a glimpse of his style. He's not a, a stoic robot. Very energetic, nervous energy. Visible when he's in the chair. The other two show tables this evening. Abdul Al Yusuf against Shane Walford of the USA, who's taken the opening rack actually. And on table one, Joshua Filler in the unaccustomed position. <laughs> Alex of being on the loser's side, he's taking on Daniel Corrieri of Italy. Yeah, and Corrieri, I think his game is very suited for this format. Second I like track. this defensive game. Of course, it depends how his form is, because break. you can win the safety battle, but you still have to make the ball. So if he doesn't make too many blatant errors in open play, Courier, that could be a potential banana skin for Filler, really. break and there's a gap between the three and seven I don't know how much shift check sees of that one ball The eagle-eyed amongst you might be wondering why we didn't have our usual intros at the start of the session. Well, the reason for that was there's still a, a match in losers round one going on. Davy, Pierre Giovanni and Francesco Candela, the all-Italian affair, they're locked together at 7-7. Wow. Naples versus Rome. Difficult to hold the cue ball on the right side of the five. You look at the cut on the five to the pocket low right. It's workable from there. Still needs to hold the cue ball. Yeah, he's playing low. So we really bite into that ball to kill the speed. And speed was the issue, Alex. The speed of the object ball. <laughs> and it seems like the Polish are feeling the heat out there. Understandably so. Yeah, I'm not saying I suspected they would. I wasn't quite sure how this would go collectively, whether they would be under more pressure than normal and wilt or they might well have been inspired they could still be yeah. <laughs> either way 
Now Elliot faced with a tester to the side pocket here. A lot more angle than what he would have wished for. You are so right though, Alex. He's such a natural potter, isn't he? Don't know if he can get there, the place that he pointed to. Can he hit it fat? Make the six slide in off the long rail. Mm. Don't feel like he really made a choice there in the end. Just settling for short distance shots, shot on the seven. Oh, but he's straight enough. Yeah, he's a very confident potter. You can tell by the angles that he leaves himself, which is smart and wise and the way he should play the game. He was perfect on the seven, and he settled for this angle on the eight. Okay, so that tells me the angle on the eight wasn't a, ch a choice. He's oh, just Anderson. struggling a little bit in the opening phase of this match. A big match, a match for a place in the last 64. So if you're watching this on the Matrim YouTube channel up at McGoldrick's Pool and Sports Bar in Glasgow, your man is doing all right. 2-0 up, and he's spotted some good balls thus far. Just get the impression that because he's coming into this match having won his previous contest, whereas Shevchik has lost his, that if there is an advantage in terms of momentum, then maybe Sanderson's got it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with Just winning a 9 8. Oh, it's Anderson to break, leading Turner. Especially winning a couple of 9 8s. Makes you feel invincible. I do feel he's a little quick on the break, quick to pull the trigger. So he goes down, two quick warm up strokes, and that's it. Tuck, tuck. And then he shoots. And that's okay if it works and you hit it right, but he's not getting the correct hit on the one. I'll bring it over towards the six. Before you start a rack of nine ball pool, you don't really know which balls will be important, which shots will be important, apart from you know if you've got the break. That's vitally important. So make the most of it. So Shevchek jumping and then making a choice between hitting the two ball on the left or on the right. If he hits it on the right, the two ball will approximately stay there. Cue ball will come down. So I think on the left side gives him, yeah. Oh, that's unlucky. Hitting on the left side would give him more outs. Somewhat of a, a scruffy table, but it is a puzzle that can be solved. It was unlikely for the cue ball to scratch like that, coming in at that angle. Okay, the four does pass the eight ball. Wants to be straight in or even a bit to the right. Well, no, no, he doesn't need it. Um, okay, so what I'm thinking, Phil, he needs access to the six. He can get access on to the six without bumping the nine, but if he plays the six with the nine in this position, 
it'll be slightly harder to get to the seven. But he's not bumping the nine, so it's gon going to be probably a cut to the side pocket on the seven later on. Can do it. He, he could also choose to leave it on the left side of the six, and then with top spin off of the nine to the short rail and out. Yeah. Now choose your angle. How straight do you want or need to be on the seven? With more speed, become unfriendlier, more unfriendly. I feel he could have played that six ball uh, with less speed, just settling for more distance to the seven. Yeah, agreed. I think with him, though, he's so confident in his potting abilities, he would regard that as a gross mistake. Could be a big miss in the context of this match. Instead of going 3-0, and then 5-1, 6-2, 7-3. Who knows from here, 2-2 two, two in 10 minutes from now. Okay, he's on the board. What if chef check? Master what Chef, what Chef Check gets his first wreck on the board. Thanks to that miss on the six by Sanderson. Yeah, you know the old saying, slow and steady wins the race. There's no doubt about it. In terms of the spectacular, in terms of potting ability, raw potting ability, I think you have to give the edge to Sanderson, but Shevchik has got that extra experience and he's a, a much cooler customer in many respects. By the way, on table three, Abdullah Al Yusuf, two on up on Shane Walford. As for table one, I believe Train Joshua Filler is off to a flyer. I'll just confirm that in a moment. He was certainly 2-0 ahead. It might well be three now against Daniel Corrieri. Very open. Look at that. Now this will feed Sanderson's disgust for missing that six. Or frustration, a better word. Because this table's wide open for Wojtek. It is 3-0 Filler over Corrieri. The third rack, Filler missed a very straightforward five ball. But then Corrieri snooked himself on the six behind the seven. Played a jump shot. Filler knocked in a terrific six. And then the last couple of balls were very simple indeed. As this run out should be from here.
just about straight is good. like planning to stay on the right side of the seven okay I saw it wrong and this this is more obvious center table will do the job just about in seven out of ten shots in a nine ball rack from the second rail so this is two wrecks for the chef check as a consequence for that missed six ball by Sanderson the wreck itself not too spectacular it's almost like the work was done with that successful break by master chef but you had that sense didn't you as soon as the six ball was missed that Sanderson was going to suffer more than the loss of a single rack and you were bang on there let me give you some scores from around the tables here still those 16 tables in operation it's the losers qualification round at the moment fabulous Fabio Petroni 3-0 up on Matt Shetner who was heavily defeated by Shane Van Boning the defending champion this afternoon 9-2 Nikos Economopoulos, 2 1 upon James Aranas. Chris Melling, 2 1 upon Ronald Regley. And Oscar Dominguez, US Moscone Cup player, 3 1 upon João Grio from Portugal. I'll give you some more at the end of this rack. Yeah, it all comes down to it. This is These are the last rounds, the last matches of phase one qualify for the last 64 and then tomorrow races to 11 with a different chemistry a different feel and buzz around the venue look at that another open layout for chef check although he has some more distance for his first shot to clear but he should get that Find the gap between the eight and nine. Of course, Alex, I think it's worth saying here, as we mentioned when he was on the main table yesterday, that Shevchik is shooting for a very notable double. He's the reigning world 10 ball champion. Yeah, he had a great win in Las Vegas a while ago now, almost a year. But I still feel his best is yet to come. I'm not sure if he will win another world title, but I'm sure he will win many titles. Won the Bucharest Open. That's you know, it's it's not a major, but that's a good one to win. Yeah, European Open or European Championship 10 ball winner as well. And I think what's really noticeable, he's won the Polish 9 ball championship three times since 2018. Now, we all know the strength and depth of talent in this country. So to win that event three times, I think underlines just what an accomplished performer he is. That, that might be the most important st statistic, the most telling. Speed is good. It's a little funny, the kind of angle on the six where you have to make a choice. Do I draw back softly, leave an angle on the seven to go round, or do I 
force it into the rail. Good shot. Jack side on a sixpence. Shevchik should lead here for the first time. One shot missed by Sanderson. And as a result, seat treatment for I'm going 10, 15 Watch minutes now. That's the cruelty of nine ball, Alex. You've been the, the perpetrator and the victim as well over the years. Basically, Sanderson sitting there dwelling on that missed six ball because after tidying up in the third rack, Shevchik has broken run the next two. And when you're sitting there, you are powerless. By the way, the losers round one is finally over. The last result to come in, Francesco Candela, who ran Jason Shaw so close yesterday, losing 9-8. Well, he won today, 9-7 against Davy Pier Giovanni. So from here on in for the rest of day two at the World Nine Ball, it is just the losers qualification round. And so consequently from here on in in the championship, Alex, it's lose and you go home. Four to the side. No, Sanderson to the table. No shot, but a good position for a save behind the two or behind the six, seven. Got it to where the six ball blocks off the short rail. What we've seen from Sanderson so far shows us that if he does make the shot clock phase, that 30 seconds of shot will not be a hindrance at all. The jump is still an option. Either the jump or the one row kick of the short rail. What could he play for? I, th I think just full in the face with speed. Hold the cue ball there and the one, three rails out. Maybe make it in the side. cuts and it's very steep difficult to hold the cue ball it cuts if you <laughs> if of course he sees the one If it cuts, then I don't think he necessarily should try to play a nice controlled shot with low left. Ah, but of course, if you can, you should 
I was about to say just cinch the ball, make it, play a high ball, center ball. But he has that ability to play even a shot like that with spin and control. Now come in between the 8 and 4 to the long rail. He's there, but sh it, this, this really should be a warning sign. I feel he got too close to the 8 ball there. Easy bell. When he's down, he plays the shot so quickly. When the mind is made up, the trigger is pulled. Yeah, but... If you play quick and you put the cue ball where you want every time, you're good to go. Keep doing what you're doing. Make the ball center table. where to put it but that little walk a little check of the angles just helps to give your brain a visual just making sure yeah this is to go three all Lost three on the spin, but gets one back now. He levels three each in the race to nine. On table two, where after this we'll have the Albanian Bezar Spayu playing against American Joey Tate. Well, after the blip earlier on against Alex Pagulain, if you can call it that, because it was such a tough draw, Joshua Filler normal service resumed he's 4-0 up on Daniel Corrieri other scores Ruben Bautista from Mexico 3-2 up on Abdullah Al Anzi Ika Echeverria and Huang from Vietnam are 2-2 Mika Imanen 3-2 down to Pius Labutis from Lithuania Now Dimitri Ungo, 3-2 up on Raul Suke. Oliver Sholnocki, semi-finalist previously in this championship a couple of years ago. He's 2 on down to Ajdin Plickenjak. Is that right, Plickenjak? Um, no, you beat me to it. Wouldn't be able to tell you. Might be Plickenjak, actually. One of the scorers we see that scratch, which could be really costly. Dimitris Lukatos, who came through a really tough battle to beat Pia Filler, the only female entrant in this year's World Championship. Well, he's shared the first two racks with Johan Schuer. Scratch on the break by Elliot Sanderson. Also, with long, more time, preparing time, you can still scratch, but... He's quick, Sanderson, quick to pull the trigger, and he'll find himself stuck against the three ball now. Not only that, Shevchek is also looking to put that one ball in a tight spot. Behind the five, can he get there? Yeah, good luck. Yeah, well did the cue ball in behind the three. There's a lot of slide on the TV tables. 
but not as much as one would expect so two railer i think he needs to hit the long rail below the third diamond like there a little lower shot good shot it cuts and it banks doesn't need to try and end up above the two ball can go back and forth come back to this spot Good. Would have liked to be straighter or more angled. I think the Polish contingent need a lift, don't they? As Alex said, it's not been the best of days for them. Some surprising exits already. Well, surprising. Lars Kukherm is now notable on the international scene. But he flies very much under the radar. He hasn't devoted his life to professional pool. But he's good, he could have been a pro. He's a year-long team member of uh, Niels Fein and Mark Bijsebos in the Oberhausen Bundesliga team. One of the main contenders every year for the title. Won German championships. A little reset. An easy route from the six to the eight. Yeah, this is fine. One of the most unlikely players to pull a quick one. To play with too quick a backswing. controlled this out Sanderson scratch on the break oh, then that safety that's behind that's the that's three that's a nice three row kick shot to hit the ball by Sanderson but from there a run out and chef check back in the lead again yeah taking the advantage for the second time he was 2-0 down if he just joining us went 3-2 ahead and now he's regained the ascendancy no doubt about who's in front on table one. Joshua Phillip potting some wonderful balls in taking a 6-0 lead over Daniel Corrieri. So maybe that defeat by Paggy Lyon was the 
the sting he required. Yeah, I still stand by my word still that Courrieri on a good day could be a potential banana skin. The eighth frag. Watch if Jeff check the break. Leading fourth. You know, on a good day when all stars align. Well, I'm going to be engaged on table one for the second match of the evening, which is Omar Al Shaheen against Dennis Graber. So I'll do this rack and exit stage left. Actually, stage right, isn't it? Oh, wow. Yeah, like on the opening match on table one where Shevchik played, he has to break down. He's the best of them all so far. Yeah, he led 7-0 against Bashar Hussein. And in all of the seven racks, he potted the one ball to the side. Really think here, you know, it's a long two ball. Don't think too much about where you would prefer to be because both positions work mid table or left of that five just play it in such a way that you allow yourself to pocket the ball and figure it out from there If he goes forward, two rails, even running into the six, he's a big favorite to get shape on the five. So just a high ball, I expect. You can feel the vibes on this match. You can feel one of them growing in self belief in a nice rhythm. The other one, well, ever since missing that six. Things just haven't gone Sanderson's way. He's either been getting out of snookers or sitting in the chair. Shevchik looking for his third break and run out of the match. I think if he he was looking at playing for the gap between the six and eight. The only worry could be that he lands behind the eight. I think if you play for the gap and make sure to go long, so to hit the six or the gap, you're fine. Oh, that's good, that. Found a nice gear, nice concentration, and the pillar underneath that, the foundation, is his break. He's getting shots. He's getting to run balls. It's certainly a contrast in styles. One a little impetuous, full of talent, the other one The epitome of steadiness and self-assurance. Yeah, nice run out. Off of the break. Wasn't an easy run out, although he parked multiple balls. 
Played a long two ball, then floated in between the balls to get shape on the five off of the four. And then still had to do some maneuvering to get to the six. Okay, Jeremy Jones is in the building. I will exit. See you tomorrow, folks. Shane Wolfert is playing Abdullah Al Youssef on one of the other TV tables. Fought himself back to 4 4. Check to break. Leading 5 3. A filler on table one. A comfortable lead over Italian Corrieri. So, JJ sitting next to me and what we've seen is Sanderson taking the first two wrecks then missed an open six ball then Shevchek played to three two then three each scratch on the break and since then Sanderson in the chair breaking really good Shevchek yeah making three on the break we've seen that a few times this week but not often Another player pulling the cue ball a little bit out from the corner of the box. And I don't think there's an advantage there. I just kind of think it agrees with that player a little more for their speed on or the hit that they like on the one. Yeah, I'm sure Alex and Phil has informed everyone this is all winner go home matches here this evening. We we'll get into the final 64. Yeah, the pause was so long, right? Yeah, and that's the miss side for the most part on these tables right now with balls going down the rail, the outer point. Of course, you can't hit it too thick, but you have a little room for yes, error using yeah. the long rail. Yeah. But uh, you and I, we work with players. We're used to watch technique a lot. So, no uh, and we watch a lot. So I think you, like me, sensed that that pause was getting a little bit too long. Yeah. Like longer that, than we used norm, to. Not as norm, yeah. Yeah, not as norm. Which is not a good sign. Yeah, and he, you know, started off the event with a pretty good match. Didn't get to watch his second match in a loss, obviously, but sometimes, you know, players can carry some mistakes from a previous match into another and just make them a little uncomfortable at times. Now, the good thing for Elliot, I think he's the type of player that can kind of leave the last match behind one way or another, whether it was a win or a loss. So. Yeah, he lost a 9-8 and then he won a 9-8. Beat Finn Makkonen in his last match. Yeah, good win there. And before pandemic, I thought Petri was really coming into his own as far as his game and not necessarily winning the biggest of events, but really having a lot of nice, nice matches and nice showings in events. Saw him mainly, of course, in the U.S. I don't get to travel to Europe as much as uh, the mainstay guys around here. But Elliot Sanderson wins the wreck. So staying in the game like that, Sanderson, and you'll see Jeremy that on his break, he sort of two strokes it. Maybe he found something there, but it looks like he rushes the, the shot. He's not getting the results that Shevchik is getting. And yeah, we have three tables of the main tables going and Filler with a commanding lead and what we expected with the other two very close matches. Shane Wolford, I think, just got his first lead at 5-4. Yeah, next match up here is uh, Joey Tate against Basar Spayu. I'm looking forward to uh, see the young American break. play. 
furious. Yeah, well, talk, like I said earlier, I talked to him last night after his loss back at the hotel. And the latter half of the match, he played really solid. He just fell behind so far, it was hard to overcome. And we just talked about him carrying those, those positive things from the second half of the match. And I saw that right there. <laughs> Maybe gets a little anxious on the break shot, so delivers a little quickly. Thin cut on the one. I think it does play. He's got to send the cue ball with some speed towards the 2-6. But... Well, if, if it's on, you go. And I don't think he can really inspect the rack a whole lot on this thin of a one ball. It's not the type of shot you want to slow roll any type of way. No, I'd be happy that the, the, two, the cue ball will be catched, so to say. And maybe it's fooling me, but I th kind of thought with a high ball, he might go by the two ball. Yeah, he tried to play it with a soft speed, and that's a hard way to play yeah. a real thin cut. Yeah, and, and trying to be really cute and hit the two ball in a certain spot. Yeah, maybe overlooking the real shot on the one, maybe, right? Well, he got away with it. Watching Josh, of course, prior to getting in to the booth with you, I can see the fatigue setting in. Actually, a little frustration that he rarely shows, a little more of it. So, Henley winning, but I think uh, very grueling for him right now. I thought earlier, even though he lost, he looked a little stronger, of course, as the day's gone on. The jet lag may be setting in. Yeah, it comes and goes. But at least, you know, he's winning handily. He's about to go 8-1. It's worse when you're in the chair. Yeah, absolutely. And the one thing that I've seen is it hasn't affected him much on the power shots. You know, a little more speed. Yeah. It's the lighter strokes that he's been a little more off on. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the cue that still needs getting used to. I don't know. And I've seen a few that have changed uh, recently right before this event. Now, at least he got to play the derby with the carbon fiber after not playing a while. But an interesting one to me was Fortunsky. I haven't seen him play with the black shaft ever. And now he, he played this world championship with the black shaft. And unfortunately, out of the event. Oh, he's going to oh, love wow. this. What a hit. What a beautiful hit. Yeah, and that speed made it to where if he hit the top side of the one, he had a good chance to drift yeah. down here by the eight, right? <laughs> Or excuse me, by the five. Yeah, either side of the one. It was decent, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Now you want to kick up the table here, but maybe across the table may give you a little better chance of uh, safety, but you never know with the nine. No rolls for Sanderson. No, and you can see, uh, besides this first shot, three pretty easy, the four over the side, five, six over the corner, so. The, does the two pass the six? I think so, yeah, I thought it Oh did. yeah, it looks like it's from here. You know, just slide by the three, just kind of coast up table. Oh, he kind of hit it much harder than I thought. Like I thought he would smooth it a little more down the table, making sure he got by that three. Yeah. But has ended up perfectly like this, actually. Straight in on the three does the job. Now this is a point in the match where sometimes you can maybe expect a mistake. Because he's, he's done the job in that he's now about to go too clear. He has an open table. It's easy to lose focus from here. Shouldn't, but it happens. Yeah, type of shot here, if you do lose focus, it's usually a little thick and to the point. Oh, a clean stroke there. Uh, 
I'll tell you, you can tell, of course, such huge matches for these guys. And that uh, even on day two, these guys, the players are pressing. Oh, yeah. You can yeah. see it in the faces. And I think the no shot clock makes that a little harder on them, uh, easier for them to press a little more rather than... And press, you mean in, uh, in feeling the heat? Feeling the heat and kind of like stressing over the, each shot a little oh, more yeah, than they yeah. maybe oh, should, yeah. you know? Yeah, so. yeah, shot clock helps. Yeah. Especially uh, for players that tend to dwell a little bit. Sure. So you could use two cushions here. You could use one. Most would use two. Huh. I think he's okay to where he can roll it. Yeah. Wasn't totally happy the way he hit it, but. Yeah, the wreck was a walk in the park, but now he has to slow roll this. It's never nice. Yeah, and there you have it, going to clear. Watch it, check, check. See Found a nice gear, good focus. And Josh Filler now on the hill at eight to one. Looks like he has a pretty clean shot on the two. He'll, a lot like Shaw, I think, uh, very happy to get through and get on and get a, a really another good night's rest. I'm staying in the hotel with uh, Oscar and Tyler. Uh, maybe Shane is there as well. Across uh, the street? Yeah, and they're at breakfast in the morning. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, but I don't Shane, understand how that works. Shane will be there at 6 or 7 a.m. every morning. It does not matter. Yeah, but how long do, do they sleep? Well, well Shane's just like break. that anyways. I stayed with him up in uh, South Dakota for several days. Even if we stayed up a little late, he's just a guy that rises with that sun, it seems like. Oh, okay. Well, good. Now, Tyler now, he likes to get, rise early, get his food, get a little workout, maybe get a little rest, something small, uh, and then get back at it. And of course, you know, these most of these guys were at the derby so still it's hard to predict what their body's telling them versus what they want to do oh yeah yeah and and it's not out of their system exactly, so exactly yeah. so it's not said that they're in the clear now it could still you know often the third day is the worst yeah, it was interesting to see something from niels fein he was in Taiwan, I guess it was, or Chinese Taipei, yeah. excuse me, and uh, did some clinics and whatnot, some boot camps, and looked like a, a good time. But they, one of the things I noticed that they did the boot camps on the Polish time. Yeah, to, they, to they practiced keep, yeah. actually. That you know, I was the the one to come with that going to the states last couple of years. I wasn't there this year, but last couple of years I've been going to the Derby, and I'm staying in home time. So I'm only going for five days. And in so doing, I don't have a jet lag there, and I don't have a jet, la jet lag coming home. Right. And everything's going on at night, so it's all good. Yeah, it's weird. I'm, I'm never really, ex you know, I'll go home and be tired after a long flight of traveling, but something mentally makes me so happy to get home that I never really have experienced that much jet lag going home. Especially, no, no, home. especially from Europe. Especially home, from Europe. Home is easier for me. Hey. Yeah, you may get a roll here. We'll Let's see. Let's stick with the match here. Crucial phase in the match. This could go like 9 5, 9 6 for Wojtek or 7 all, and who knows from there what happens. Pulled the trigger a little quickly on that one as well. Oh, yeah, that's his thing. And then he, you would think, why does he jump this? But the four is a little far away. Now, if the hit's pretty full, it's not the most terrible jump shot. Like we know a guy that's not here this week, Fetter Gorst. I think he could handle this jump kind of landing on the two. It is a nervy shot, though. 
Yeah. You wouldn't want to do it on a cut shot, but something fairly full, you know, you could justify it. Yeah, but he has an alternative. That's right. He's looking at his line to go real first. Hit the top side of the two, bank the two ball back to the nine and go up table with the cue ball. Yeah, pretty standard shot you need to have in your repertoire from a lot of different places. It wants to play naturally if you understand the shot. Easy to get a double kiss from here, though. You know, he came across it nicely. Good shot, good speed. Now, I'd be happy if I were Sanderson with the position of the nine. It'll help with controlling the cue ball. You can focus a little more on what you do with the two. Would Again, you, quick. He's quick. Yeah, would you roll it just to get past the pink with the two here? That's probably um, the right shot. Let me see. Yeah, something like this. Just get out of the inning shot, even though he might be in trouble after this. But he's so quick. Yeah, the one thing about that is he'll never be a slow player, but he's got a. There's no coincidence that in every sport, when they get a chance to take their time, they do. Yeah. You know, I always talk about like basketball. They run up and down the court, but as soon as they put a good move on somebody, they square their shoulders, they do everything right. It's just like a free throw, it seems, but. Now, two rail skate, please. He's looking at one rail. I thought he may try to hit before the side. Oh, before the s yeah. I don't think the pink's in the way, really. I don't, well, in general, I stay away from one rail shots like this. Yeah, so li yeah. like you say, um, two rails feels a lot more natural. Gives me something to aim at. Yeah, good effort, Foul. but unless you're going to hit down on the ball and hit center ball, you have to predict ball the bend ahead. of the cue ball, and it's never That's easy. That's not very sporty, is it? No. Chef check, putting the screws down. Yeah, enjoyed it, Alex. I'll have to catch you on the next one. And go forward for a shot to the side pocket. Make sure to play top spin. Get a nice reaction of the cue ball. Two players. In general, don't play a true top top spin. Have a tendency to strike downward. Always try and make sure to be level. Hit really high to get a true top spin. Also, on power shots, it will give you a nice acceleration of the cue ball. Nicely. Now come all the way across, top spin. Maybe a trace of left. Now oh, he has enough angle. So there, I spoke about making sure to give true top spin. I blinked when he struck the ball, but I heard it was a, a heavy sound. They didn't really come through the ball nicely. Still good, of course. Twice across. That's nice, close to the rail. To have an open angle, 
stun draw somewhere below the eight and he'll be fine going clear now this is going very much shift checks way he had a chance Sanderson but the more he's being kept in his chair the harder it will be to convert those chances into more table time and Rex on the board, it's about to go 7-4. Two more needed for Wojciech Shevchek. And then he'll be back in the main board in the final 64. After his grueling loss, a late night, early morning finish against Imran Majid yesterday. No problem, sir. Thank you, Rack 12. The word Jeff Jeff takes a break. Leading 7 4. 
three clear. Shevchuk breaking and he's breaking good. So worrying times for Sanderson. This match is getting away from him. really understand why he would excuse himself Wojciech Shevchuk very polite but why I don't know if this one ball goes if it does it'll be difficult to get shape on the two if it does not he can yeah. elevate and bank that one ball, three rails out of the corner. Okay, he's going. Or maybe even if he were to elect the safety, a two row kick behind the one. It's laying pretty good for a kick and stick. Attack the bank. Play it at a speed, making sure to miss on the short side on the long rail. <coughs> there, that's what he's looking at. Attacking the bank with position. Good. Good break. Good one ball. No shape. And a nice effort on the two. You can play the two ball where he pointed to. Difficult. from here I don't like the shot the one I said two rails two ball towards the nine below the nine he's playing the cue ball no he's playing the two it's a very 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 nice sh shot super difficult Best bet, I feel, is coming off of the short. Well, yeah, he's looking at a full hit, but it'll be hard to not have that two ball ending up near the pocket top left. I like him kicking this ball, hitting the two on the left side, aiming to send the two ball to the middle of the upper rail and the cue ball to the left, possibly hiding behind the six. Then he plays two balls. He plays the cue ball and he plays the key. D 
deep sigh from Sanderson. And if not on, it's a good jumping distance. Swerved it in with sight. Big shot coming up for Elliot Sanderson. Kubel close to the rail. He's been on the receiving end the last 30 minutes. Trailing 7-4, where it has been three each. One good shot needed. Six, seven, eight, and nine after the three. Won't pose any problems. That's it, keeps himself in the game. There was a beautiful pot on the three ball. There's nothing wrong with Elliot Sanderson's Sanderson. potting ability. And his desire. Toilet, yep. And Hart now takes a little break. He'll be breaking. Probably this one. We'll be back in a couple of minutes, trailing 7-5, breaking in the 13th. And if he gets that going, if he could only get that break working, he's well able to get back in the match and top it and maybe play his third Hill Hill match in a row. He lost the first, won the second, 9-8 against Makonen. Could well be another 8-8 in the books against Shevchik.
Rack 13. Elliot Sanderson is trailing 5-7. And we'll break. Okay, the missing component for a potential victory by Elliot Sanderson. A break. A good break. Balls down. Foul stroke. And sight on the lowest numbered ball. That's harsh. That's harsh. Lost cue ball. Right after a timeout. Go to the toilet, look yourself in the mirror. Positive self talk. Let's go. And then that. Nice solution for chef check. Just play a natural line, two rails come into the three ball with a side pocket. Never ever end up on the low side of the three. Perfect. Now next one for the five ball, only three pockets available. The five goes to the pocket low left, so with an angle. On the four, will float approximately towards the six. Draw back one diamond. Maybe into the rail and out. Don't know if he can roll the ball. Roll with a trace of right spin makes it easier to control the speed. So it was a wrong angle on the four. The roll shot was not on. With a little more speed, he risked to fall behind the six ball with the cue ball. But he's still good. He still has a shot, at least. But there's pressure. There is pressure. It's only 7-5. Some angle on this five, so to the side pocket with draw. He cannot overhit it, he cannot blast it. He would lose the cue ball in so doing. So I think he'll have some sort of an angle on the six, so he's even going forward. Just a high ball would do. And now my skid alarm is going off. We've seen quite a few skids, kicks, botage on the TV tables. Depends a lot on the speed that he plays his width. good he's good clear sailing from here steady Eddie that's the difference he's not there he looks to go 8-5 get himself on the hill but Elliot Sanderson is still a talent, very talented player, rough round the edges where Wojciech Shevchek is a proven 
proven champion and a hard, hard match player. Knows what to do when it counts the most. Three clear, unlucky for Sanderson losing the cue ball like, like that. And scratching. What a nice out. Nonetheless, by Shevchek, the reigning World Temple champion. One of the Polish top guns here in action. They've lost two today. Two of the big guns, Skowerski. Lost against Aranas. Kutunski lost against Kukerm. Kukerm, remember that name. He could take down one, two more players in this championship. And on the other table. Shay Wolford has done well. He was trailing Abdullah Al Youssef early in the match. But from there, leveled and went on. Never looked over his shoulder. Wins that match 9 4. Last break for Shevchek. He's been breaking like juice in this match. Many balls down, many positions. Maximum distance, cube on the rail. I hope it's not too tight past that seven ball. If the passage is tight as well, then this the level of difficulty of this shot is a nine and a half. Keep him tight, Sanderson. Cannot give Shevchek any air. With Shevchek frowning and studying the tables, almost as if he can see and hear his brain working. Cerebral kind of guy. Now, if he sees this two ball full enough, he can't hit it on the right side, but if he can hit full, he could consider to play a power draw. Try and get the cue ball back. And the two off of the eight would bank towards the right side with an outside chance of making it. It's a little wild. see too much else too, ma too many other options oh wow yeah that very strong very strong finessed it thin and soft over distance Oh, great shot. 
Notabene, a lifesaver. Funny things can happen when you put a man with his back against the wall. Did I mention he's already played two Hill Hill matches? look but he's the one that put the cue ball there <coughs> slightly hampered by the eight ball that's nice the man is a shooter he wants to shoot he wants to go go Once in rhythm, I really don't see him miss too many shots. But he hasn't had any rhythm after missing that six in rec three to go up 3-0. But it could still happen. No problem. Yeah, I can see that. on the wrong side of the seven he can, if he pockets in the left side of the pocket he can draw straight back and then have an angle on the eight this is better more natural route now go to the top side of the nine left hander can reach it easily Elliot lags for the cue ball. Yeah. A big let off. A big let off. There was no reason to under hit that shot. It's so much margin. <laughs> there you are. Oh, it's Anderson. That's the right. Eight six. Still in it. And did you see all those people around the table now? All the Polish fans trying to root their guy to the finish. Chemistry can change. A lot of heat. One good break is what Elliot needs. And the difficulty with this cut break, you cannot over hit it because of the cut. So when there's pressure and adrenaline in your back arm, it's difficult. 15 frag. Oh, it's Anderson to break. Trailing by eight racks to six. Mm, unlucky. Cue ball still going south. Hey, but he has a shot. Two balls down. He has a shot, although it's tight. Pass that four. So cue ball went south because, yeah, misfortune. It hit the low side of the two. Basically, it's all about this shot.
there's room on the right side so if he drifts over with the cue ball close to the long rail he'll have a gap he'll have a gap to pocket the three go to the four it doesn't need to play this withdraw oh full pocket beautifully struck I'm very neutral here I like both guys great players I call them my friends but I hope Sanderson gets these six balls and heats up the affairs on table two just a little bit more yeah this is nice Just come through the seven and nine. Don't worry about an angle. If he were to land straight on the six, it's still manageable. Doesn't need to land straight. Stun draw with speed. Yeah, medium speed. Probably play two rails. Depends on the exact angle if he draws to go short long or just short. Hmm. I think that's pretty tight, pretty steep. I would have liked him to play for the corner pocket. Did I mention he already played two Hill Hill matches today? Or one yesterday, a loss, and a win today. Some sort of running now for Elliot Sanderson. Rhythm. Break and run. Must feel like bit of breeze on a warm summer's day having that shot on the two after the break 8-7 at the beginning of the show Phil Yates sat next to me and he said about Anderson and he's called the shouter two years ago Milton Keynes and Sanderson had a good run and a lot of shouting Rack 16 we haven't heard that for a while, oh, it's but trading. it's well possible we will, if, of course, he would scrape through. First take care of the 16. Oh, Ooh, that's going to be close. It's going to be close. And I'm sure Shevchek from the chair will be watching Sanderson's body language here to understand if this one ball is on or not. And it is. It is Sanderson. Yeah, you could almost consider playing the shot with right spin because it helps seeing so little of the one and because maybe then you could cue alongside the nine instead of going over the top shot and now you can play to center table to leave a cut on the three or play long rail long rail where he pointed to Don't try and end up too straight on the three. 
give yourself a shot. That's good. Oh, it's thin. I spoke earlier about topspin in nine ball pool. This can have been another case where a player thought to be playing high right, but hit that cue ball just a little bit too low. Oh, he's seriously out of position here. Looking to go around the world. And I'm not sure. It might still be on. That would be the move of the evening. Act like that and then still have an open shot and blast it in. fact that he's looking at the nine ball makes me think that the shot is not on. He's jumping. This is no two-way shot. You're playing either the four or the nine. Wow, what a roll, what a roll, he's had some misfortunes, it has not been going his way, ha, <laughs> that's a very late apology, uh, Elliot Sanderson. By the way, I'm not suggesting anything, implying anything, Sanderson is a great guy, warm-hearted, just very intense when he's playing pool. <laughs> the epitome of intense at the table. A lot of nervous energy. Yeah, he needs to go to the top rail. And then, down table, there's only one ball to hide behind. So I don't think that choosing this route with low speed, there's any future. Yeah. Played with speed. Play it with speed to make one of the balls go up table again. Nice. It's a good shot. And he can't complain, obviously. Maybe the straight back is available, a bank. He's just returned, Sanderson, from the Derby City Classic. Played his first bank pool tournament of his life to hone his banking skills. But the kick shot is very playable. It's sitting very nice, this. Off of the long rail, three-quarter ball contact. Bring the cue ball over to the right in the four, approximately to the second diamond. This works. I don't see Boite going, going for the. Yep. Oh, for the he's not going for the bank. He's going for the cut. Even if he makes the cut, the cue ball. I see. It Ending up closely to the top rail.
Oh, nice. Good heads. Played it with a trace of right spin. And do you call this luck or misfortune? Misfortune that he ends up so close, or luck that he still has a shot to the side pocket. Can still make this. Now, if you strike a ball so close and with an elevated cue, hitting across the pocketing line, the aiming line, you push the object ball a little bit offline. So you need to aim this a little thinner. Now, with more speed, you'll push less. So sometimes it helps you just for pocketing the ball to play it with a higher speed and sacrificing cue ball control. Yeah, good shot. Chef check, three balls, you're there. Don't let up now. Staying on the right side of the seven. A job well done. I don't see him going wrong from here. Very strong match by Shevchek. And I'm sure Sanderson will think back about that six ball that went astray in rec three. Shake it to start, Shevchek. Sanderson with a chance to go 3-0. Missed that chance. And from there, Wojciech, Master Chef, Shevchek started playing really good. Strong performance and through to the last 64 in this year's World Championships. Next match on table two, Bezar Spayu from Albania up against Joey Tate, USA. tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality sustainable hardwoods utilizing world-renowned designs diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability after all they are designed by players for players this championship is being played with the new rms tournament set Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My Aramith, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience.
Thank you. John. Joey, that side, right? Joey, is that side? It should be. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah, I think if you take it like this. Yeah, yeah. okay. Brendan. Hello. Ah, you're one of you. <laughs> uh, no, he's at the bedroom. He's not. Okay. How do you say your last name? Spahiu. Spahiu. Spahiui. Spahiui. Same. Spahiu. Spahiu. Yeah, that's it. Spahiu. Spahiu. Um, this side. I got him. Yeah, I got him now. Oh. Basar's here and he said Joey's in the bathroom and coming. Joey. Yeah, so that's all I need. Neither one was here when I saw it. No, that's right. It's like this. It goes like this, right? Have they changed it? Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right? right? It spins in like that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can get to you two minutes. Here you go. Sure. And the balls are in the pocket. I'll help you. You help me get the balls out. Make sure you don't go anywhere near the cue ball, okay? Huh? What did you say about the cue ball? Uh, at the end of the game, okay. if you help me get the balls out, and make sure you don't go anywhere near the cue ball, okay? Joey, if you help me get the balls out at the end of the game, make sure you don't go anywhere near the cue ball. If you help me get the balls out at the end of the game, don't go anywhere near the cue ball. Okay. All right, guys, we start in seven minutes. Joey, you're on this side. Oh, thank you. Okay, two minutes, and then two minutes for you, Joey.
Luke in production. I'm uh, just making sure I start at 35 on table two. Thank you. Which one of you guys got sick? Was it you got sick? Uh, not not only actually. <laughs> Me either actually. Yeah. yeah I was almost dead yesterday. Almost dead really. You guys doing better today? Uh, it starts me today, not yesterday, so... I feel better, but you know, the, I'm exhausted after yesterday, so yeah. I have no energy. <laughs> but stomach is better. Okay, go get some rest then. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Feel better. Joey, two minutes. So was it a good hit or a bad hit? Sorry. So was it a good hit or a bad hit? Well, table one. Were you commentating table one? Remind me. Doing Omar, the two and the three? No, no, I wasn't commentating. Oh, okay. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know the incident you're talking about. I did see a replay in the distance, but I, I couldn't say. Okay. They went and had a look at it though on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was just always wondering what the commentator said because they played it like ten times. I, I, did, <laughs> I did the first match, so. Uh, All right, Joe, you gotta finish up. Thank you. 
gentlemen, have a great match, and you may lag for break. Great match, guys. Okay, welcome, guys. Joey Tate, USA Basar Spy U from Albania. I'm Alex Lely, Netherlands. Next to me, Chris Melling, the UK. Chris, let's go. You, you just qualified. Spencer Good job. Yeah, I just got through um, nine, nine, se nine, six. I think it was nine, seven. Uh, the guy uh, messed up on the eight ball at the end and then conceded the match, which you're not really allowed to do. But he, uh, I think he's had to go a little bit. Well, that was a strange lag. Crack number one. Joey Mr. Spathew. went straight off in the corner. To break. Yeah, we watched we watched you play a little bit yesterday. Uh, yeah. Um, Carl Boyes was talking about you being more into English pool lately, but it didn't look like it. You know, you played with great field, nice touch, and you were very positive, so that touch probably got a little bit better. Yeah, I'm using new, equi new equipment as well, and uh, I haven't been feeling great for the last few days. I've not been sleeping well. You know, I've never used that as an excuse, but it certainly had an effect. But it's like I said in the interview earlier, the longer I'm in the event, the better I'm going to get. I'm going to feel more comfortable uh, with using new cues. So uh, the throw of the ball is quite different, but like you say, if I get used to it, then... Uh, should do okay. Yeah, and I don't think I, you don't tend to load the cue ball up with spin, right? No, I try not to put spin. Yeah, on yeah, the but, but but that that's a misunderstanding because like amateur players back home they watch you play online and it looks very extravagant, but that's just a backswing. Like your follow through is compact and you're staying pretty close to the center. Yeah, it's, it's quite strange because the hit on the nine ball table is completely different to the hit on an English pool table. And again, completely different at Snook. Obviously, the size of the balls are totally different. And uh, with nine ball, you tend to spin the cue ball a lot. Um, with English pool, it's more about you know getting in line, getting your patterns, your connecting dots. Yeah. Yeah, many small shots under pressure, I feel, in English pool, because you have small spaces. Yeah, it's only a seven-foot table, so you, you've got to be really compact in spaces and play good cannons. Anyone like from a neutral point of view that has impressed you watching a bit or are you Totally minding your own business not watching anything. I've not really watched a great deal to be honest like a, like I said I've not been feeling very well So I've been in the hotel most of the time apart from when I'm playing the match But there's so many great players that are playing this uh, world champ world nine ball championships and There's probably one in 50 can probably win it But the equipment will get tighter the longer the tournament goes on Yeah, all good ball strikers nowadays and therefore it's so good that with the new breaking format there's more moving, there's more defense in the game, more strategy. Yeah, and I, I really like this guy's game from Albania, from Albania. He's gone under the radar a little bit and he's a very, very difficult opponent to deal with. You've played him? I've never played him, but I have watched him play a lot of times and I know... Uh, Catchy speaks very highly of him. Yeah, yeah, I've seen him in, seen him playing Euro tours. He's technically very, very good. You see the shot there. Yeah, he's sound, plays a nice pace. And what he does different to a lot of players, he stays down on the cue. He doesn't jump up. Well, you have to. If you want to stay in Kachi's vicinity, <laughs> I mean, Kachi back home is God, so probably everyone in the pool room, even the, the amateur players, all stay down. Yeah, it was really strange because when I first met Kachi, he was at the Derby City Classic and he uh, asked if he could share a room with me. Yeah. And I never saw him for about 10 days. He was literally playing money match after money match after money match. And I, I don't know, he didn't get any sleep. You know, he obviously did over 10 days, but I never saw him because I must have been out playing my matches. But he, he was like a kind of unknown. So I think he won about 20,000 while he was there. Oh, OK. Well, yeah, he was unknown for about two US trips. Okay. He went fast. Great player. Good mechanics, Eklund Kachi. He's the main man in Albania, but Bezar Spy U here clinching the first wreck. 
He's probably number two now. He's definitely number two right behind Eklund. Yeah, and they've got a very good team for the World Cup of Pool. So let's watch his break. How's your break going? What's your your tip just between you and I? Well, I won't tell anyone. The first match I, uh, I broke quite well. I was 4-0 up and I was making the ball nearly every break. And then the last match, I think I made a ball of about five breaks. So I'm quite happy with that. It's, it's very difficult. Each table breaks differently. Even though we're playing on the same equipment, you can play on the TV table and it, it will break completely different. Break number two. Our current score is one to zero in favor of Mr. Spafu. Let's see what Mr. he Spafu does. To break. Oh, well, he made the one. Uh, I was surprised by his backswing or his release or the transition or look so quick. Yeah, he, his backswing was quite deliberate and then the follow through was very quick. Looking at the position for the purple five to the side pocket on the right. So that tells us that the pocket low left is not open, not available. So a big shot here. It's not so much the draw shot. You know, it'll come back easy. It's more the speed control. Yeah, and he was quite fortunate to get the shot on this three ball because the cue ball was kicked all over the place. But he's found the gap. Well, better long than short on that stroke. Yeah, that's something that you'd always teach Alex, where if you land short on the four ball, he can't possibly get onto the five, where if he lands high, he can still play a cannon onto the seven ball. I think he'll have a shot on the five into the top right-hand corner pocket. Or if he feels he cannot control that with a little draw, go into the five. So that's less control, but, you know, he can hold the cue ball. Yeah, he's got a few options. So, thinning the four and then falling on the seven, that's a nice shot, unless it's too thin and too acute, the angle. Yeah, the other option is you play the four ball off the side rail and stick the cue ball in behind the five. Okay, now a difficult shot on the five to get a difficult shot, so is it then wise to attack the five? Yeah, this is a, a real tough shot. This is one of them where you, you've got to push the cue through straight and stay very still yeah, on but the shot. Where do you go with the cue ball? I think you've got to follow through. I think you can play the six past the nine ball. Yeah, but if he makes it, he goes like to the top left area of the table. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what options he's really got, to be honest. He has got option of a safety, but can he play a real tight safety? He, no, he won't be able. He can bank the five back down table and put the cue ball on the top rail. Cross it. But basically, a difficult shot to get a difficult shot. Usually, then it's time to pass up. Nice. Well, what a great shot that was. <laughs> yeah. Centre of the pocket. They don't come much better than that one. Yeah, beautiful. And like you said, stay down, go through the ball. Uh, he did that and was compact. Very nice stroke. How many times do we see that, Alex? People play a great shot, and then the very next ball to go for. Yeah, yeah, but this this wasn't a sitter. I think he overhit it a little bit. It seemed like a lot of speed. 
Now he can go through the gap or play it soft and just fall on the right side of the seven. Yeah, I think for me, you've just got to drop this in with the touch of left and play the seven in the opposite corner pocket. Yeah. Well, he's played that well, but it was very risky, and now he's bridging right over the eight ball. Yeah, the thing is, if the object ball is so close to the rail, and if you're rolling or a topspin shot, the cue ball gets funky. Like it, it doesn't come out straight. Yeah, I was very impressed watching Joey in the US Open. He played brilliant in that event. Certainly a star of the future. Nicely done. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of him. But what I do know is that there's a lot of talent is coming through now in the States. They have players. They're there. Yeah, I don't know why, but the lefties always look really good on the queue. Oh, yes. Yeah, more natural. So one each. Good wreck by Joey Tate. Picking up the pieces where Spyu hung up that six ball. Thank you. And it has something to do, Chris, with the brain hemispheres. It's like uh, with left-handed players, their their hemispheres are more in sync, and with right-handed players, right-handed people, the the left brain hemisphere is, is dominating, uh, which gives. Uh, okay, in short, in short, left-handed people have more feel for the ball. But, but you know, in Q sports especially. A lot of feel for the ball, but a little less stable. Yeah, definitely. You know, you look at the snooker players and the likes of Jimmy White, Mark Williams, Judd Trump, you know, players like that, they, they look so good when you watch them. And obviously watching Joey play, filler, you know, they look so good. Yeah, but they're also, in snooker, they're, they're crazily overrepresented left-handers. Like one in ten people is left-handed, and in the top ten in snooker, five out of ten are left-handers. Rack number three. Yeah, and you look we at other sports as well, and you know, piece. Lionel Messi, let's put it. To break. Even Nadal at tennis. Left handed. Oh, yeah, baby. Uh, also, in tennis, they're overrepresented. Basically, they're better in sports. Yeah, we forgot about Jason Shaw as well. Jason Shaw, filler. Fortunski, that's one of those guys that looks good on the ball. Yeah, he's uh, he's brilliant to watch his Fortunski. I'm surprised he hasn't won a lot more than what he has. Well, it's also about mental stability. I was kidding, like, during the celebrations after we won the Moscone Cup, the big, big difference between the previous axis, Appleton, Feyen, uh, Suke of Team Europe, and the axis now is that then they were all right-handers. And uh, with Shaw and Filler being both left-handers. Their yep. high gear is higher, but their low gear is lower, I feel. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and the downside to that sometimes is that when you play the doubles matches in the Moscone, is you're leaving your opponent sometimes the opposite-handed shot. So where you sometimes would leave the cue ball for yourself or a right-handed player, you're kind of thinking, well, I can't leave it there because they can't reach it. Yeah. Tricky little shot here. Well, he can roll it in and just accept that the cue ball is going to stay close to the long rail. I think that's best. Yeah. Well, he played it nice. He played it in a way with a little more authority. Yeah, he played it so that the cue ball kind of didn't take a diversion. Just needs to make sure he doesn't leave himself straight on the six ball. And I like the way he played that. He could have rolled that in and still got the same angle, but he played the kind of feel shot. So he's obviously feeling good about his game. Yeah, but also good habits. So knowing how to play that shot. Like the 
when he played the four on the side, hit it a little thicker, go through the ball, the stun run through here, all little situations where you can play sort of a, a weaker shot or with more authority. Yeah, Nikita running out at this game is to try and leave yourself as easy as possible where you don't have to hit a ball, just kind of float every ball in like he's doing now. He's leaving the cue ball in the centre of the table where if he was playing snooker here, this would kind of be a tough shot or the last shot would have been a tough shot. But in American pool, you always try to leave big angles. Why on earth, as he tried to pinch that pocket, he could have potted it and sent the cue ball across the table for the nine ball in the opposite corner. Yeah, so that's more than execution error, a uh, thinking error. And I'll tell you something, Alex. Fair play to Matthew Sport for tightening these pockets because a few years ago, there's no question that would have dropped in. And for me, when you're under pressure, you, you want to see people miss. And especially, you know, when they're hitting the well, draw before the, the pocket. You want to see a missed ball stay up. And how it was that a missed ball would drop. Yeah, that's correct. Picking up the pieces again. Joey Tate. We've seen it in so many Thank matches, you. like the opening phase, the first four or five wrecks. Eh, players not finding rhythm, a bit tentative at times. The best part of all the matches is in the second half. So I'm going through a couple of results. It's, you know, judgment day. Players are playing to qualify for the last 64. I see. Jungo beating Ralf Suke. Dutch Jan van Liro beating Jonas Soto. 9 4, that's a good win. Piknac from Bosnia Herzegovina against Solnoki from Hungary. 7 each. Lukatos Chua. Okay, let me just go through a couple of wins. Oh, yeah, and the one I was looking for Oscar Dominguez beat Joao Grillo. Rack number four. Because I saw to the left here Oscar Dominguez Mr. Tate. sitting and he looks Mr. like he Tate. lost, but I think the jet lag is just catching up with him. Yeah, a lot of the players were at the Derby City Classic, so uh, they'll certainly be jet lagged. I know when I spoke to Jason, he was saying that he was going to stay in bed for 24 hours, he was that tired. Wow, that was a poor break, he completely mishit that. And he's been very, very fortunate for that ball to drop in the top right hand corner pocket. Yeah, very, because he's straight in on the two. Needs to bridge off of the rail, but there's some distance. He's definitely supposed to make that ball. He doesn't need to do anything for position on the 3 6 combination. Well, this may look an easy shot on the TV. When you're out there, these middle pockets are very tight. Okay, now the next challenge, how do you control the three? Because the, he needs to sort of cut the six ball in. I like to play the cushion first with the three ball here, simply because you guaranteed position if the six ball drops. Yeah, but then it's missable, the six. If you play too deep into the rail, it's, it would be missable. And that's the downside of playing that shot. It was always an upside and downside of each each way to play that shot. It was just personal preference, really, I think. If the bank is on, I like the bank. Swing it round to cue ball. Yeah, definitely. He's been quite fortunate to leave the gap there. Could, could have easily been behind the five or the eight ball.
fortunate again. Now this shot on the four. He has a long shot on the four. He can also choose to bring the cue ball to the left side of the five. Swing it around if it's too steep an angle. You basically want to find a way to make the four and have shape. And this way you can see, you know, it was a big angle. It wasn't a nice stroke for him in this moment. Maybe if he's feeling good, maybe if you're feeling good, it's a nice one. But if you swing it round and go to the top side or left side of the five, it becomes a nice stroke, right? Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Alex, because simply if that four ball drops in, what kind of shot has he got from the five to the seven? Playing the way you're talking about, you're guaranteed an angle on the five ball. Whether that's a five into the top right corner, five into the centre, yeah, or but five into the other corner. Yeah, but aside from that, first you need to make the ball. So don't play speeds or strokes that you don't like if you have a choice. Well, a lot of people would think that's unlucky, but that's actually a poor shot. Can in the eight ball. He has got a safety shot. Can he clip off the five and go side cushion, bottom cushion in behind the seven? Very thin. I think he can play it. Yeah, or come through the five and give the five speed to go to the long rail. Now he's clipping. I don't like this shot. I think the other way is a lot better because you guaranteed a good cue ball. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa. That is never the shot. That's like in between the two options that we mentioned. Yeah, I think he's struggling a little bit out there. All of a sudden, and that's just due to inexperience on the main stage, because what he has shown in skill and shot selection was good before. It's going to be an interesting match. Yeah, and this isn't a gimme, because that cue ball's tracking towards the bottom right hand corner. Well, and, and the eight ball. Eight ball's big. The cue ball's close to the corner, and he missed it by that far. But he's now stuck it over the side pocket. Is it straight in the top pocket, though? Cue ball's tight on the side rail. This is close to going straight enough in the top corner pocket. Yeah, I'm not playing this with top. I don't think he can. I think he's he's got to jack up on the cue ball, I think, and hit the middle of the cue ball. You don't want to be playing it with side because playing with side, it's, it's more difficult. You've got to be more accurate. Maybe I'll be able to play this very thin with a lot of left-hand spin. He's played that very nice. That's a yeah. great shot. Uh, a good shot. And a nice roll because he, he has come off the uh, jaw of the corner pocket. Nice and easy here. Well, he's been in this position a couple of times in this match and he's not got out. But you'd bet your life he gets out from here. Well, odds, odds on the money. I'm not betting against you, Alex. I never win. Nice and easy again. Trace of inside. Doesn't need to be straight on the nine. Oh, he's drawing. Nice, nicer way to hit the ball. Both talented players, both inexperienced on the main stage. So it makes for an interesting scenario here. Could go a long way this match. Thank you. Yeah, and you can see catching the background there. Well, he's not watching the match by the look of it, but Johnny Storm supporting his boy from Albania. Op just opened up a new pool room in Tirana. Looks really nice. He told me anyone that goes there, any nine ball player gets free drinks. A 
I'm interested to see how that will influence his career. Eklund maybe at first a little bit more difficult, you know, distraction, a business, but then maybe for the good of it. Yeah, it's good to see somebody like Kachi, you know, investing in business. A lot of the players throughout their career just seem to play Rank a lot of money five. matches and they're currently tied at two games apiece. Don't get me wrong, they might win a lot of them, but they certainly lose a lot of them as well. So let's watch his backswing and delivery. Yeah, again, that snappy delivery. Yeah, and it's not come out too bad. Maybe, he maybe able to cut the two in and send the cue ball towards the six ball just to slow the cue ball down if he misses a six he'll still be on the three i don't know if it's there uh, chris and if it's there i don't see him get to the six. Ooh. Well, he's looking at the gap between the six well, and if, the, and yeah the but if that's the route if that's the route i don't know if i like it that side pocket looms large, also off of the four. The other option he's got is to screw the cue ball and send the two ball, two rails to the bottom cushion, and then the cue ball towards the three. It's a lot of balls to hide the cue ball. Oh, did he hit it nice? What a did shot. he hit that nice? Beautiful. Yeah, that was a great shot there. And He's just looking now, three shots in front to see if that five ball goes past the eight. And it does. So now a simple shot from the three to the four, but then again, like mentally, you can't get this wrong and then all of a sudden it becomes hard work, the wreck. But if he lands straight. Yeah, and I like the way he's played this. He's yeah. always guaranteed a, a shot at the four to get to the five. If it had landed slightly high, he could have played for the five in the centre pocket. So again, thinking three balls ahead with that seven ball that doesn't have a pocket on the low side of the table. It'd be nice if he draws back and comes low on the five where he could make the five, bump the seven, with the shot on the six. Hmm. Yeah, not, not great. I'm just wondering, can he roll the five in the centre pocket and just cannon the nine softly? That'll leave him a good angle from the six to get to the seven. If he can't, he's going to have to stun the cue ball off the side, cause, so, sorry, off the bottom cush, side cush. And what he doesn't want to do is be straight on the six ball. Yeah, that's the advantage of rolling into the nine. If he could, he would have a natural angle. But he's stunning. And he's straight in, but, but the, the good news is that he ended up pretty close to the six. Makes it a little more workable. Yeah, he's just got to be a little bit careful here because he doesn't want to overscrew this and go behind the nine. If anything, he's probably better under it in this. Because he's going to have a 7 8 combo if he lands short. Perfect. Wow. What a shot he's played there. That was a lot better than it looked. Beautiful shot. We also got to see a nice close up of his skewing motion, his back arm. Held it very still. Very good in spurs and some unforced errors. 
for partaking the fifth. He regains the lead. Bezar Spayu from Albania up one again. Bezar. Billy Thorpe has managed to make a nice comeback on the other table. Now leading 5-4 from a 4-0 deficit. And Dennis Grape is making light work of the former runner-up Omar Al Shaheen two years ago when he lost the final against Elbidden Ocean. Oh, sorry, Billy Thorpe is not up, he's down 5-4, but still, from being down 4-0, he's back in the game. The Torpedo. see Dennis Grave in the background there 8-2 in front and for me one of the most improved players over the past two to three right, years. Number six, our current score is 3-2 in favour of Mr. Spahew. Mr. Spahew to break. Oh good, perfect. Perfect break. Wow, what a break that is. Wow. Really nice. By the way, um, the heavy breathing, it's John Lehman. It's, <laughs> it, 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 it's not Chris nor I. Just to make that clear. Yeah, John's one of the most experienced referees out there. Does a lot of acting on the. Uh, is it the west? Is it the West End? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Difficult this. He can he can pot the two ball, and he'll see the three, but he'll be angled. It'll, it'll be too thin. He needs to get closer. Well, I think he has got a shot, but it's kind of a little bit of an exhibition shot. Come on. No, not you again. I think I think I genuinely would play it, Alex. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Pop the two, top spin the three ball and arc it round the four. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I think if he leaves a long cut, there's room to come down table, short rail and bounce back up again. There's a lot of... And you need to arc it a little bit, but you want to arc it the whole way. <laughs> yeah, for the crowd, Alex, for the crowd. Just, yeah, and for YouTube. <laughs> Get your numbers up. You have a channel, right? I do, yes. Oh, this is no good. Yeah, for me there, he's just got to drop that in and take his medicine. Take his medicine. He may have to go two rails, bottom rail, side rail, and play it slowly. The problem with this is when you're playing on this table, this TV table, it slides like crazy off the cushions because it is a lot warmer out there, so the cushions do play differently. And he's looking at the side cushion and not quite sure there's a gap there. And if there is a gap, he's going to have to play it with a bit of pace. And he could follow that three ball in with the cue ball. Let me see. Seven to three. So if he plays from the diamond, from the diamond where the six ball is to the diamond above the side pocket, that line with stun will get you to the corner pocket. So he, he can play this with stun. The eight is not in the way. Yeah, I, I like the way he's looking here. Just wants to hit this roughly just past the bottom diamond. I think he's missing this by some way if he hits there. I may be wrong. No, no, I think you're right. Unless he plays draw or stun. I think he's hitting the seven ball. Foul. All right. Well, the good news for Spayu is that with that previous shot, he has 
Block the pocket low left for the purple five. Yeah, we see a little bit of the shaking of the head there. That's not good to see. That will only give his opponent more confidence. I'm a little bit surprised he's not looked at putting the four and stunning straight down the table and playing the combination shot with the five seven. Can go two rails. But you gotta play it like you mean it. Well he's playing for the bank. Not a bad option. Same here on the bank, you have to play it like you mean it. The cue ball is going to travel. But I'll tell you, because of the new cloth, five close to the rail, it can arc. I think he's doing good by hitting low, going towards the six. Yeah, he's got to be careful he doesn't hook himself behind the nine. On the six? Yeah, I think if he, if he plays the, the five hard, he's going to need luck. Well, I think if he if he goes into the six, that that's a smart choice. I feel. Yeah, I I, I agree with that shot. Shot played it perfectly. Great shot. So a good bank by Tate, and an easy three ball, so they'll, although he'll take nothing for granted. So Chris Melling made his way, and now I'm joined by Mario He from Austria. Hello, Alex. Former World Cup of Pool winner in the booth tell us a little bit about your tournament i'm assuming joey tate is going to run these two balls we'll settle for three each on table two so what's going on um i had a rough start i didn't play my best game in the first match um, i lost it against Spadkowski. um i was trailing eight four i think i came back eight seven and i had him hooked and he got away twice and then he finished it um, but then the second match today, I uh, played against another Polish young guy. Um, played good, not the best, but I played good. And now for the qualification, I play, played against Bongers and I played almost a perfect set. And I beat him 9 1, so oh, good. feeling better and better. I haven't seen you break in this format, not recently, but I'm sure you're not a soft breaker. No, not really. Um, <coughs> Have you seen Shane break? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. You break harder than Albin? I think so. He's breaking with a draw, like a lot of draw. Yeah, what do you do? Um, I started the tournament with a draw break. Yeah. Um, I changed because I made the one ball all the time, but I just made one ball and... Uh, just one ball. No, I mean, Boo -hoo. I got tricky positions. Yeah. Um, then I tried to change it. Um, I play with a stun break, like a stop shot, like yeah. very hard, yeah. with no draw, with just English. Yeah. And that worked very well. So I'm going to stick with that one for now. And how, how many different breaks do you have up your sleeve? Um, around Track two to seven. four. <laughs> around <laughs> two to yeah. four. Okay, let's keep it at three. It, it depends on the table also. Yeah, it but depends I how have, you feel. Right. I have, at the moment, I think those two... The draw and the stun break is like the my two choices. Okay, yeah. For this format. Yeah, I like you. You know, Euro Tour break. Yeah. So nine on the spot, no break box. I like you breaking hard. I mean, you're very good yeah. at that. That's sort of the break that you're describing, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, um, I I I saw like eighty percent maybe of the tournament they're breaking with the draw. Yeah. Um, I think it guarantees you the one ball quite often, like more yeah. often than my break. But with my break, I quite often make the wing ball. Yes, yeah. and you get more action. Right, so other right. balls might fall. Right. The nine ball is big also. 
Nine because ball. Yeah. I go with the right spin. I try to go into the rail, into the nine. Okay. There is a danger with scratching in the corner and the side if I hit it not that well. Yeah, but you never have any trouble with throwing the dice, right? Uh, right? Yeah, well, I feel so comfortable with this break that yeah. it doesn't happen that often. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, let's leave it at that. So you're qualified, you're waiting for your opponent. When will the draw be done? And then we'll go to the match. Excuse me? When will the draw be done? I don't know yet. Okay. I don't know yet. We'll wait for that. I think after the matches are done. Meanwhile, three each, Tate and Spayu. Evenly poised. They've both made nice shots, good shots, and a couple of unforced errors. I feel it feels like the kind of match that will drag go on like six six, seven seven. Yep. And then maybe it's also not easy to play on this table. It's not that easy. I mean it's gonna get it's gonna be tougher with the pocket, but it's already tough now. It's not that easy. Oh no no no. Well it makes for good viewing and I I think it's also nice for the players, right? Yeah. It's it's sort of easier to stay focused. Right, right. And like every shot is not guaranteed, so you, you have to stay focused even if the if you have easy layouts. Ooh, nice one. That was very nice. There was a good clean shot, so he can draw straight back, or maybe stun into the long rail left and come out to the right again. But I think he'll draw. Yeah, I think he will draw. Like, feels more, feels better. Let's see how clean he hits this. Just lower arm action or a little push. Oh, little snappy. But it's a very nice bump. Gives him the five to the side pocket. So you're looking, I'm looking to the seven. Do you think, would you try and get in straight in on the seven or leave um, an angle? I would try to go to the rail, to the right long rail. You can either draw it back or go three rails. Yeah, all the options are on that side. Because if you leave the cue ball like in the middle of the table and you draw it, you might draw it into the nine or even too far or too short. Mm -hmm. You're, it's not, you don't feel comfortable sometimes with this shot. So here I would go left spin, three rails to the long rail. Just feel the pot is easier. Center left or high left? Um, high left. Yep, that's what I wouldn't do. Yeah, well in no. the end he chose from where he was the stroke that he liked the most. Yeah. Uh, you have more finesse than Bezar for yeah. effect, so yeah. you like that finesse shot. Now he'll basically play the same type of shot, go back and forth. And this is a nice angle. Make sure to not overcut a little thick, the pocket will still eat the ball. Ooh. Oh, that was played with confidence. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's the finesse thing. I'm sure that you would have played it not at double speed. Right, I would have just killed the cue ball. Yeah, and make sure with a little thick hit that that ball still drops. Yeah. Taking the lead. Thank you. Started with a nice cut in the one, super thin. So this year, yeah, so if I ask you what do you want to do, you'll say I want to win tournaments, I want to qualify for the Moscone Cup. Yeah, right. you were close. 
I quit. It's a pity. Well, you know, I would have liked to have <laughs> you under me playing. Um, but what are you looking to do to get the results? Are there any, like, uh, things you want to do to your game or to your life? Your Yeah, I mean, um, I always try to improve, you know, um, like, playing-wise, especially playing-wise, because I feel like I'm... I'm very good when I play my game, when I feel comfortable. Yeah. But when I, let's say, I'm not the best shooter when I when I feel not comfortable at the table. So, like potting wise, I think I have some improvements. That's what I wanna change mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and also right, like, I just wanna, you know, the most important thing for me is also enjoy the game. Yeah. And I enjoy it when I'm playing good. So it's <laughs> like a yeah, it's a circle. It's a vicious circle. Yeah. Okay, but but so you're gonna do some technical work, work on your fundamentals a little bit. Yes, um, I have some. It's not like it's like exercise, but it's like standard shots. Yeah. Um, especially long shots. I try yeah. to improve my long shots. Try to improve my technique. I mean, you always can try. You always can improve. You know. Of course. And. Yeah. You can also improve. Um, for me, I like to look at some players when they are doing some things right. Not trying to copy it, but trying to learn from that. Yeah, try and figure out right, right. actually what they are doing. Yes. Or you could try and ask. You can always ask. Yeah. You know, it's quicker. So, Spyu looking if he can avoid the five with a thin hit. He's moving, he's acting like he can. Yep. It's the only shot. If he's on the three, he's, he's like 80-20, no, 90-10 favorite to run out. Oh. He played it with a little bit of left spin, is that right? Yeah, trying to get to that long rail. Now an interesting shot for Joey Tate. This is difficult, uh, yep. fans. The pocket, the balls in front of the pockets are the most difficult shots, in my opinion. I mean, for not for making it, but for playing position. Okay, nice little love bump off of the nine. back and forth make sure to not hit above center that would make the cue ball arc he's hitting above center and he needs to come on the high side of the four he's good is this a skid alarm um, or is it too thin for that? I don't know. I never think that uh, I, I'm going to get a skid. Never? No, Not never. even when you play straight pool? No, never. Oh, my God. I mean, I don't know. I can't remember last time when I was thinking, oh, I might get a skid. You got a skid. <laughs> no, I mean, I got some yeah. skids, but I never thought about oh, that. Oh, okay. No. Just like, I don't want to think about that, you know, before my shot. And well, I think it's, well, I don't know, it's, if I play straight pool, sometimes I'll have it and I'll change the stroke that I was planning to play. You know, if I'm ah, playing, okay. if I'm rolling like a three-quarter ball shot and I yeah. feel it might be there, I can I can play with spin or right, I can do right. something to make it a little more pinchy, the yeah. hit. That's what I do mostly with the ni with the last ball, with the nine ball. If, if the shot is easy, yeah, I like to play it a little bit harder and oh not, yeah not roll it sure yeah but also what what i sometimes think is but not every time but sometimes that the table rolls off <laughs> and oh that's, oh, that's, oh not that's good that's your paranoia yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> no that's not good i never think about that uh, yeah. unless i see it yeah i mean i just hear like when i play here at the diamond tables yeah. they are very steady so i don't feel like okay they roll off so i can roll the balls but yeah there are some tables uh, when when that happened to you exactly on the table. Yeah. You don't like to soft uh, sure. roll the balls yeah. after that happened to you. 
So back and forth. Trading blows Tate and Spayu. USA takes one back after Spayu hung up that two ball. He takes it back, sinks the nine. In the back, Wolfert and Dominguez watching. They're through. Styler. So Tyler Styler is also playing in this round, as is Hunter Lombardo, two of their fellow countrymen. So all Americans are still in, right? Um, yeah. Nice run. Yeah, yeah, I feel I feel the U.S. is on the up. I see, you know, I see many young kids or yeah. kids, young young players, good players with good fundamentals, seemingly with a good work ethic. I see him hanging out together, so I yeah. see more. Uh, that's what I think to see. Yeah, yeah that's my yeah. interpretation, but it seems like they hang out more. Right. Traveling is tough. Yeah, traveling is tough. You you know away from the table, you, there's a lot to learn also there. Yeah, I mean you you always have fun when you were on the road like last year or two years ago. You had that long trip in the states. Yes, and I saw all those pictures online. Like you Kazaki's right. great <laughs> and so uh, Solnoki, right? Yeah, yeah, right. This yeah. was the crew. <laughs> you guys have a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of fun. Um, also this year we were like two months in USA. Yeah, but it was like mixed. It was like I was with Max and Alvin, then I was with Alex and Lu the Lucatos. Oh yeah, and yeah. And Dennis. Yeah. But you're always happy to go home. Of course. Yeah. But Joey Tate is not ready. Bezer Spayu is not ready. They're fighting this race to nine to decide who gets to play tomorrow. The four is blocked. So he needs an angle on the three. He oh. would like to. Oh, sorry. You yeah. You go. No, I just. I think I just uh, wanted to say that this was this is the best solution where he pointed the cue ball to go on the other side. To hit. Yeah, on the low side of the three. Right, right. Yeah, but that's a little tricky. Yeah. I don't think he trusted himself to be able to put the cue ball there. No, sort of. He broke down halfway the stroke there. Yeah. He forgot to hit the ball. Yeah, now what? Straight in. Jack up draw, like extreme draw with right spin is not going to do it. He can't accelerate the ball. Yeah. It's, it's very tough. It's very, very tough. I still would try to draw it as far as you can go. Yeah, just go as close as you can. All right. Because with the cue ball mid-table, you can figure out some sort of a shot. Maybe you end up in a carom position or a safety position. Mm -hmm. And from here, the safety is difficult on the three. So what options does he have? He can overcut the four to the right, miss the six with the cue ball and come down table. He's deciding quick. Is he going for the combination? He tries to go three rails behind the nine. Hit it a little bit thicker. Oh, nice hit. Yeah, very nice. I think this one is not easy. The six is a big ball here. Um, oh, he's going for the jump. So what do you play if you're jumping? Straight in the face, jump bank? Um, if I, I wouldn't jump it. I think I wouldn't jump. No, but your player, hey, you're the coach, and you say kick it. He says, no, coach, I want to jump. And then you say, okay, but make sure to... I would say, at this jump, I would say try to make it and and go the cue, leave the cue ball three wheels to the 
short version. Oh yeah. I think it's not on, but yes. Nice effort. Yeah. Nice effort. Was a good shot by Joey Tate. Yeah. The safety it wasn't as easy as he made it look when he played that safe. It was easy to sort of hit that four too thick and bring it right. to the left side. It was a very good speed because I don't, the four can go too long. Yeah. And also the cue ball has to be good. So it was a very good safety from Joey. One diamond closer to the five would have been nicer, although he's left-handed. Yeah. But he needs to power this a little bit. Can't leave himself too much angle on the six because the seven doesn't go in the pocket low right. Shot. Yeah. Now draw back to where he stands. Seven to the side pocket. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You got lucky there. What's your shot, Mario? He. Um, ooh, this one. Mm. I think I would punch it with left spin. Going into the long rail and three rails to the eight. Doesn't Has need a lot of spin, I think. Wow. Oh. Very nice. But not out of the woods yet. Horrible shot this. Yeah. What's your ideal position for the cue ball? Is it like a little bit of a cut or would you like to go and leave it as straight as you can? Like up to the second diamond. I would go like one diamond up, like to the side pocket. That's where I like the cue ball the most. Yeah. Yeah. Nice stun run through. Came close to hitting the jaw of the side pocket. That would have would have been sweet. Yeah. Now stay down. And come through the ball. Oh. Ay ay ay. Ay, that hurts. That hurts. The margin is on the thick side, but of course you don't. That type of shot, I don't think you aim to make it thick. I think those shots you try to play it a little bit thinner than yeah. too thick. Yeah. Yeah. Trading games, the pattern of this match. Thank you. Losers qualification for a place in the last 64. Trading games. Yeah, this one's going to be a close one, I guess. Yeah, he played a good shot on the seven to bring the cue ball over to the eight ball. A little bit too good, too straight. Yeah. That's why I wanted to go uh, three rails. Yeah. And play not over the side pocket because mm -hmm. if it's straight, you can do. In my opinion, you can do a little bit more. Yeah. Then when you're on the sh when you have to play over the side pocket, but I mean he played the seven very good, he played the eight very good, and the nine was a not an easy, not yeah. easy ball. So, yeah, but shots with inside spin aren't for everyone. Yes, and especially, uh, and this is just a hunch I have, that um, new generation players they have less feel for inside. Yeah. A lot of straight work, low on the cue ball instead of going forward and rolling the cue ball, mm. natural lines. 
I think that was one of the um, points uh, which brought me going back to wooden shafts. I just feel like the uh, inside English yeah. is easier for me to control. Yeah. Can do more with English. But there are also a lot of positive things when you play the carbon shaft. Yeah, there are pros and cons. Yeah. Now this shot, you have to go. This isn't too hard, hard speed-wise. It's like medium plus, little low. That made it tougher because you had to play it with a medium speed. Yes. Because if you just have to make it, I think you're going to punch it more. Yeah, you would punch it. But is lucky to not leave anything in the open for Joey Tate. It's actually a tough position, this. Yeah. I think I would bank it between the three and the nine. Oh. That was a very good shot. Yeah, good shot. Yeah, the thing is with banking back, like seven balls are in the lower half of the table, then you're bringing the two ball back in that half. So if you expose part of the two ball, the resave by the other guy is a big risk. Yeah. Stay still on this stroke, Spayu. And so he did. Oh, he got a fluke. I expect actually this is going to go continue until the end some good shots some lucky shots back and forth yeah it's very difficult to keep a positive mindset like yeah every time yeah. you're telling yourself in the chair you know you're doing your routine staying in the game All right and then you play seven good shots yeah. And maybe a poor shot, and then you go back to your chair. It's, it's like you fall, and you get yeah. up again, As and this 28 times in one match. Especially when your opponent plays the same. Like, you know, when because sometimes when your opponent plays very good, starts to play very good, you yes. keep up with him. Yes. Now, it's easy to make the seven. So I would choose here, or with more speed and left, just bring the cue ball to center table. Just follow the follow the four, sort of. Or try and control the four, bump into the eight, and maybe have something near the side pocket. Yeah. I think, it, I'm not sure with this angle, but maybe it's possible to play the four bank between the four and eight, and go in front of the left corner pocket like somewhere there oh yeah that would be nice but I'm not sure if it's on oh that was good so he played your shot nicely done well actually he played both because I thought or send both balls mid table or hold the cue ball there and just play the four with the eight. Oh yeah he yeah. managed to do both This is big. Can yeah. double his lead. That feels so good if it goes like 2-2, two, 3-3, two, three, three, four, 4 and then 6-4. Yeah. Especially when you have some good shots here. Gives you confidence. Stay there. Basically, basically, he wants to punch this six ball in, come out one diamond. Yeah. So when I'm the opponent and I sit in the chair, I'm I'm sort of trying to think, okay, 
is there still something that can go wrong from here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, always. Sometimes I think that too, but not always. <laughs> But yeah, j j I'm just trying to follow the game. It's not like uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to jinx my opponent. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I like to do in straight pool. I think that's what that what you said. I'm doing in straight pool. Just f follow the game. All right. Yeah. Trying to play, understand. Uh, well, playing without playing. Right. Right. And I think in the winner break format, that's also important in nine ball. Oh sometimes yeah. you can sit for a few games. Yeah, you have to keep yourself in the game. Yeah. Thank you. So this was the wreck where Bezar Spy you made that lucky shot on the two. Oh yeah. He jumped the two, fluked it in. And now takes a two rack lead. Yeah, that's a big game for both mentally. Mickey Krause won his match, beat Martin Daigle 9-3. He qualified. Track number 11. Had a little bit of uh, disappointing performance Favorite against Nayuki Oi yesterday. This is Spikey to break. But the great Dane has scraped through. No shot on the two, but the eight balls in front of the pocket, low right. So that could make him consider jumping the two. I think he's going to jump it. I saw him many times jumping, so I think he's... Oh, well, maybe not. Difficult jump though. I think jumping, you know, anywhere between full ball and like two thirds is sort of nice to aim. It's okay to aim, but any thinner than that is difficult. Yeah. Just think that he wants to jump it because of the eight. Yes. Doesn't want to leave the opponent. Like you can push and make a jump easier, but then yeah. I think he would, the opponent would take it. He can't complain. Uh, Was close to scratching. Still leaves Tate an open shot, but uh, with an angle in the wrong direction. I think on that jump, like when I play, I always try to tell myself where the margin is. So is it better a little wide or short? A little harder, a little softer, and here on the jump, a little thicker, would also give you the chance to make it off of the nine. Right. So I would right. tell myself to at least not miss it thin. Yeah. Good shot, but he's down six four in a difficult, tough match. I mean, it's it's a real hard fight. So nothing is coming easy. Both players giving 100% on every shot. Nice. Very good shot. High ball, bit of right, go to center table. A cut on the five is just fine.
Oh, interesting route. Yeah. Result is fine, but in so doing, he flirts a little bit with that seven and the five. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. But I do think he needs to stun a little bit. Yeah. Come over so he, he can miss hit this shot. Nice. You play two rails here? I think I would slow roll it. Just hold, yeah. Yeah, yeah and this match already uh, three, four, five times. We concluded that you would play the finesse shot and hold, and they go double yeah. speed. Yeah. That's the thing. You guys, like the top pros, you're able to hold more. Like the folks back home, they want to practice the big shots, but they don't realize that, you know, there's a lot to gain on the soft spe side of the spectrum yeah. also. Yeah. Good for the match, good for Tate. If he makes this nine, he's within striking range again, 6-5. Nice out. Yeah, 100% per shot, I said. So, not because you're a big guy, but just when I work with people, talk about pool, I sometimes use the example that a shot in practice will consume, let's say, two calories. I have no mm -hmm. idea, but let's say two calories. Yeah. If you play the Austrian championships, you know, you want to win, but it's not like right. no pressure. There would be eight. Right, per shot. Yeah. So how many calories you use here? How uh, many calories will you use in two days from now when you're playing for a place in the semis? <laughs> a lot. How many? <laughs> uh, I don't know. But yeah, but yeah, but now we're, we're just guessing. Like 15, 20? I yeah, don't know. yeah, I think it goes way up there. Yeah. I think more, actually. But most pros, I know for this, for you, 100%, the more you play, the better you play. Right. Right? Yeah. If you, if you have a couple of close matches, tough Very matches forward, under six, your belt, five, you're just going to grow. Yes. You're going you're gonna to start playing better and better. A dry break. Don't think he has a shot. Nah. Don't think he's supposed to kick at this. No. Um. Gee. Hmm. It's not easy. Not no, it's easy it's situation. not easy. Where can he push to? Uh. If he puts the cue ball down table, it's easy to go behind yeah. those three balls with the cue ball. The only like what what I see would be maybe push to the rail, yeah. and leave him a jump safety. Yeah. That's maybe what Yeah, I the would. only thing I see exactly, yeah. yeah. This is a big shot. Can also open up the two ball and sell out. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. 
got she shot. A lot of nerve. Yeah. To choose that shot and to hit the cue ball as clean as he did. Yeah, that, play, that was played perfect. It was a risky shot. He got awarded. But it's still, I think the two ball doesn't go long. Well, no, it, it doesn't look to be going. But if he comes out a little above the two to the left, he can play a very good safety in between yeah. the five and eight. Yeah. And it's difficult enough to reach. I would sort of just, you know, get a good stroke in. Right. With top spin come out and find something from there because yeah. there's a lot available. Here, I would try to come out way more than two less. Like yes, exactly. Yeah, again, so you question right. yourself, is it better on the short side or on the long side? Yeah. The margin is coming out too much. Well, he did enough. Yeah. So much so that the safety from here is not easy. Do you think he was trying to play cushion first and go for position? Oh, wheels? all the way around, yeah, it's possible. Because that seemed like very hard for the shot, what, would, what we have played. Now what? Very soft. <coughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. That was very good. That's a uh, couple of valiant shot selections here. First that kick shot after the break yeah. to make the seven and now this wouldn't want to open up to eight five It's the story of this match. They don't sell out a lot. Yeah. He can, let me see, he can bank the two ball below the nine, make it come short, bank back up against towards the three and bring the two ball up table. That's one. Yeah. The one that he looked at, he was pointing to the three balls, difficult to get the the cue ball there. Oh, he's cutting it directly. It's on. Yeah. You can avoid the four. Makes it easier. A um, little bit of a missed opportunity. Yeah, uh, I would have. I would try to hit it even thinner, going into the rail and then into the three. And that gives him the chance to get the cue ball more in the middle of the table, of the rail. Yeah, the and, rail. and hide the two ball a little more. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice little return safety over distance. Now, on a new cloth, you can play this, unless, of course, you can go rail first. But if he needs to go to the short rail, on a new cloth, he's going rail first. On a new cloth, if you have to go off the short rail, you can go with right spin, which would make the cue ball go yeah. back to the short rail yeah. again. 
a shot that's not playable on an older cloth. Yeah, I, I like more the short rail kick with right spin. Yeah. Leaving distance and leaving, trying to leave the cue ball on the rail, on the yeah, short rail. Yeah, from here he, he needs to make the two. Yeah. If he hits it, doesn't make it, he'll sell out. I see nowadays a lot of players like to take their chances to run out. Uh, you're getting older, Mario, <laughs> and more mature as a player. Foul. It's You're a poker player, yeah? Uh, ah, come on. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> no, you, they say you're a good poker player. You picked up a big prize somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, you were on television. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's like a weaker poker player with a so-so hand. If he's playing stronger players, they'll go all in quicker because they don't know how to play their hand. Right. Right? It's yeah. the same here. Yeah. Players go all in because they don't know how to divide the pressure over multiple shots. Yeah. Or push out. They push out for a jump because they right. don't know yeah. how to play you. And in a way, it makes sense. Five eight is a tricky shot for the distance of the eight ball to the rail. So he has to make a choice in playing that combination. Is he sort of cutting the five into the eight? Uh, which from here I would do. And sometimes you can choose to play it into the rail, but I like cutting the five back yeah. into the eight. Just soft. Ooh. And not unlucky. Yep. Could still go, but if it goes, it's difficult. I think it's not on. I think the eight is so too far. So on. what do you play if it's not on? What options do you have? Um... Maybe he can clip the five yeah, and I'll avoid the eight, right? Because then he can, you know, he can get the cue ball down table. I think I would just hit hit it soft, trying to get the cue ball on the rail. Yeah, and give him a half ball, right? Because after that, there is no easy safety. He has to get behind the nine, otherwise you have a shot. Yeah, true. It's very difficult for lower level players to see a shot when there's not a, like a real safety on yeah so the shot you say is it like sort of it looks weak but it's not yeah i always think a safety when i'm there if i want to play this the sh uh, shot after yeah and if i don't like it i'm gonna play for that i'm yeah. gonna play that You meant thinner. Yes, I just wanted to play it very thin and very soft and trying to get the cue ball to the rail. Yeah. And not leave him the left side now. Yeah. From where he stands. Joey can try and put him be on the eight or five to the middle of the short rail yeah. and cue ball to the nine. Because the eight was very good for Bizarre. When he play it to safety if, if the eight ball would be at the five well nice attempt on that bank back cut bank really difficult there's no shot clock there will be a shot clock from the last 16 and going forward he can take his time what shot do you like here? Uh, well, I need to see the exact position. If the eight ball is not frozen, and if that five is like more than half a centimeter of the rail, I would definitely consider uh, a carom. So you like the carom more than the combo? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
But if they're closer to the rail, both, then it would be the combination. Yeah. But mind you, in my book, he's not favorite to make this. Yeah. Maybe 30%. Wow, beautiful shot. Very nice. And I think he has a natural angle to cut it. Let the cue ball float to the left of the nine ball into the short rail. And then with a little bit of left, come back up again and avoid yeah. the six. Seems to be lying pretty natural, right? Yeah. Very yeah, good shot. good shot. An appreciative snap of the fingers by Joey Tate. Yeah. A steely out by Bezar Spayu. Very nice. Played some big shots. Yeah. And I'm thinking about that safety yeah, that Joey Tate played when he went for the bank. A difficult bank. It felt like yeah. a free shot. But if I think uh, that's a maybe. I'm not saying it was absolutely wrong. But if he yeah. would have just opted for the safety without attempting, attempting the bank, the safety could have been tighter yes. than what he gave. I, I'm not a fan of banking and playing safety. I rather choose one of those. Oh, okay, yeah. So, I mean, there are sometimes there's a shot which is very good for playing a two-way shot. Yeah. But many times when you play the kind of two-way shots, it's like half-hearted, you know, like yeah. not, you're not fully into that. Yeah, I'm thinking about poker now. I've played a little bit of poker. Yeah. And there are these hands where you are tempted to follow along and keep chasing like a magic card. Yeah, limping yeah. in, right, <laughs> and then it's still looking nice, and then you have to check, yeah, and then all of a sudden your pot committed, yeah, right, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then you lose an arm on the flop, right. What you're looking for?
qualification action, loser's qualification between American Joey Tate and Albanian Bezar Spayu. It's Bezar Spayu's timeout. And this young man is trailing two games. Still in it. But he needs to find something from somewhere and pick up the pace. So back in action, Bezar Spayu needs two wrecks for place in the last 64. 13. Our current score is seven to five in favor of Mr. Spayu. Mr. Spayu to break. Good break by Spayu, who, as most players, starts to break better and better throughout the match. More feel, more rhythm. I don't know if that two ball goes. If it doesn't, he has a nice safety. Just bring the cue ball to center table. Half ball hit on the two. Bringing it two rails around that five ball. Mind the gap. He's left to cut. Yeah, that was the hard part. Almost impossible to avoid that thick contact on the seven. Now the type of shot that Bezar Spy you made earlier in the match. Can easily choose to bring that cue ball there above the four. Don't know if it makes the pot easier if he follows. The thing is, if he plays this with follow, will he scratch? If that's the case, he would need to play sort of a stun shot. So now, in my book, how I see it, he missed it thin in order to get that cue ball to the long rail. I think many mistakes, many misses are for that reason. That a player is subconsciously steering the cue ball. Doesn't look to aim real first. Good roll. I thought with real first, as thick as he could on the three, he could easily bring it to center table.
twice across, a little bit of low left, come over the side pocket on the right, not too deep. Depends on the exact angle. If high right brings him to the long rail on the left before the side pocket, that would be fine. Two rails and out. He's had about 80% of the table time in the last 40 minutes. It's coming inside now. Qualification for the last 64. Yeah, and a straight in nine gets him on the hill. Base are spy you. One more to take down Tate. Thank you. Difficult match for the young American. Some mistakes creeping into his game. Lacking feel at this moment. I think if we go back, it sort of started when he hung up that nine ball. He was straight in on the eight on the left side. Had to leave a difficult shot on the nine, hung it up. And from there, Baser Spayu has started to extend his lead. Last break for Spayu. Then he can join his fellow countryman Eklund Kachi in the last 64. Track number 14. Our current score is 8 to 5 in favor of Mr. Spahu. Mr. Spahu to break on the hill. Oh, that's sweet. Cubo got kissed back up table, but he has no sight of that one ball, at least not of the lower part, where he could cut it in. Looking for a place to push the cue ball to. Push out call. Yeah, push out for a jump. Why not set it up a little too difficult? So Tate, your option? Try and use the score line in seducing your opponent in taking on just too difficult a shot.
All right, good call by Joey Tate. This is it, young man. It's time. Time to step it up. Needs to come with a good shot, though, here. If he goes forward, top spin and speed, that three ball is going to be big. Just a little bit of disconnection. And I mean, he has that slow backswing. And right before he starts delivering the cue through the cue ball, a little bit of movement. It's one of the... This is a, can be played as a trick shot. Force draw into the long rail and then make it arc back. Come over the side pocket on the left. Or follow. Long, short. And back up table, good shot. He isn't done fighting, young Joey Tate. was pointing to that spot left of the six. It goes from there. But with this angle, he'll try and come around the six and nine. Can react funky though after that long reel. Don't hit it thick. Two-way shot is on, a bank on the six and a carom on the nine. I'm definitely convinced that it's go time. Pretty close to six and the nine, so if you bank, it's, it's clear to see with the tangent line where the cue ball will go with stun. Ah. Well, that's curtains for Joey Tate. Good cut shot on the six. Misfortune to scratch in that top pocket. But Basar Spayu, without a doubt, will sink these last two balls and will be the deserving winner. 9 5. 9 5 if this one goes down, and that would conclude today's action on table two with a few matches to go in the arena. We're waiting for the final victories, the final names to be put in that 64-man draw. But one thing is sure, Tate is done playing in Kielce, Poland, and Besar Spayu joins his fellow countrymen, Eklend Kaci, both from Albania. They'll be back in the last 64. Single knockout as of tomorrow, races to 11. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.
diamond tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality. Sustainable hardwoods utilizing world-renowned designs. Diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability. After all, they are designed by players for players. This championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF range of ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My Aramith, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience.